Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is a gift ban march on Harrisburg lobbying training. Thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Michael Pollack, Rabbi Michael Pollack here with March on Harrisburg, and we're going to go through how to lobby for the gift ban today. Uh, the gift ban bill, House Bill 484, we passed it out of the House State Government Committee twice back in 2019 and 2021, and it's a new session, and we're back at it again to pass this law to make bribery illegal. So this is a presentation on how to lobby. Um, I'm going to share my screen here in a second. For those who are on Zoom, uh, you'll be able to see everybody else who's uh, watching this in, in another way. Um, everything here is on our website. Everything that we're talking about here is on our website, mohpa.org. Uh, you can find all of this information. So lobbying, why do we lobby? We lobby because we need to educate our legislators. Uh, they don't know about our issues. They don't think about ethics issues. They don't think about money and politics. They just kind of live in that world, but they don't often, they don't know the details of the gift ban bill. They don't know what is actually in the bill. So we're there first and foremost to educate and just explain, explain why these issues are important, why they should make corruption illegal, um, and, and what we expect them to do about it, right? Every lobbying meeting ends with, with an ask, with a demand. And uh, we also lobby to kind of claim the space. Uh, when we think of lobbying, a lot of us think about, um, you know, high powered corporate attorneys, Comcast lobbyists, fracking lobbyists, insurance lobbyists, walking in with their very expensive, you know, $5,000 suits, plopping their fancy shoes up on the desk, kicking back with a cigar, you know, having a good time. That's kind of the image in my mind. Um, but that's not who lobbying is for. Uh, and if you think that only the rich and powerful should be talking to our public officials, then we've kind of already lost there, right? They're supposed to be responsive to us, not to the rich and powerful. And so, uh, you know, when we lobby, we're claiming that space, we're taking that space back from the rich and powerful. And we're saying, no, these are public representatives, they're supposed to be representing us. So we're here to talk to them. Um, lobbying is also a very necessary tactic. That's why we engage in it. Uh, it's, it's necessary to first, of course, educate the legislators, but also to keep them updated on where the bill is and really shepherd the bill through the legislative process, um, making sure that it goes through the committee, it gets to the floor, it comes out of the Senate committee, it goes to the Senate floor. Shepherding the bill through is a big part of, of lobbying and why we do it. Uh, but of course, just remember, our community-powered lobbying is not all that we do. Um, any group that just goes in and asks nicely is uh, going to fail um, because you can't ask nicely for them to outlaw their own corruption. It's very hard to do. Uh, they're, they're not going to do it. So, you know, our, just know that when you're lobbying for the gift ban, when you're lobbying with March on Harrisburg, um, the uh, we have more intense tactics that come later in the process, um, tactics like nonviolent direct action. Uh, so lobbying, think of it as the negotiating phase. And when negotiations break down, we go into nonviolent direct action mode until we can get back to the negotiation table. And then when that breaks down again, we go back to protest and we go back and forth, back and forth until we're over the finish line. Then this next point here, I'm going to say this a million and one times today. Don't be intimidated as you lobby. Do not be intimidated. Yes, most lobbyists are high-powered, six-figure, seven-figure earning uh, corporate attorneys. They say very big, fancy words. They have very expensive suits on. Uh, who cares? Um, you, you go into the office of the public official. They also generally have fancy suits on, usually less fancy than the lobbyists, not usually always <laughs> less fancy than the lobbyists. They have a nice pin on their jacket that says they're a state legislator. They have marble and gold and, and you know, columns in their offices. Uh, it can be intimidating. Um, don't let it intimidate you. They're people. They put on their pants every morning like the rest of us, one leg at a time. Uh, they're people. They're human beings. And they are your representatives. They are our representatives. They work for us. We're allowed to go talk to them. And we have to go talk to them. Because if we don't, who will? And the answer is the lobbyists from Comcast, the lobbyists from Shell Oil, so on and so on. So don't be intimidated. We have to go lobby. Lobbying is necessary to move our bills forward. So here's how you do it. So first, uh, and, and those following along um, on this video here, you'll see on our website, there's section one, schedule the meeting. So to get a meeting, you first have to schedule it. And scheduling a meeting is a lot like uh, 
scheduling an appointment anywhere, you know, with a dentist or whatever it might be. Um, you call their number and you set up a meeting. It's, it's really that simple. Uh, so there's a link here to find your representative. So if you click that link, you can put your address in your city or zip code. You then have to prove to them that you're not a robot. And then you can, uh, they'll tell you who your state representative is. So click that link and then call their district office number and set up a meeting. Um, you can call their capital office number. They have a capital office and they have a district office. Usually the district office is, is better for this type of thing. Um, there's usually a, somebody in their office called the scheduler and they usually work out of the district office. So here's a sample script for once you have them on the phone, you can say, hello, my name is blank. I'm Michael um, and I'm with March on Harrisburg, a pro-democracy anti-corruption organization. I would love to meet with representative blank to discuss House Bill 484, the gift ban. When are some good times for the representative to meet? And that's it. And just take it from there, set up a meeting, find out what time works for them, what time works for you, and go from there. Have a bunch of times with you that work for you. Don't just go in and say only on this day at this time works for me. Have options um, so that you can, once they reject one, you can say, well, how about this? Well, how about this? Well, how about this? And don't be afraid to go a couple months into the future uh, to, to set these up. You often do have to, to set them up a couple weeks, if not months, into the future. Um, but don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated. It's just like setting up a, an appointment to go to the dentist. It's the same thing or to go, you know, to whatever. So then after you set up the meeting, um, then you're going to prepare for the meeting. And by the way, as you're setting up the meeting, as you're preparing for the meeting, as you're doing the meeting, and as you're reporting back the meeting, Please, 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 please be in touch with your chapter leaders and legislative team members on Slack. Um, don't, don't go off and just do this alone. Check in with us first. Do it on Slack. If you're watching this, you're probably already part of our Slack. If not, just sign up through our website uh, or reach out to any of us um, and, and you'll get signed up into our Slack. It's our internal communications platform. Um, and when you're on there, uh, uh, please jump in and say, hey, I want to go lobby this representative. Has anybody else here already done that? And the chances are yes, because um, we've talked with a lot of them, if not all of them. Uh, and then somebody might jump in and say, hey, um, I'm the chapter leader out here. Uh, we're going in for a meeting in two weeks with this guy. Do you want to join? Or, hey, there's two other people that live in your district that are part of our group. Can we send them into that meeting with you? Would you like some support? Um, and chapter leaders, we're here to, to support you in whatever ways make sense to get you to go lobby. That's that's the goal. Um, we're here to, we'll go into the meetings with you. We'll go through this training with you. We'll do whatever support you need um, so that you're not going in blind and you're not going in solo. Uh, so, okay, so part two here, preparing for the meeting. So there are five documents up on our website here. First one is called the legislative handout. Uh, we're going to open that one up here and read through it together. This is a, a, a handout that very much um, just explains the bill. It just explains what the bill is and why it's important. So when we lobby for the gift ban, the thing that they're going to talk about the most is what are the exceptions? That's what they're going to ask questions about. So we start off the legislative handout by just explaining the bill and, and the exceptions. So House Bill 484, that's the gift ban, House Bill 484, introduced in the House by representatives Jared Solomon and Paul Schemmel. Jared Solomon's a Democrat, Paul Schemmel is a Republican. This bill bans gifts to public officials and employees over $50 per year per giver, and it bans hospitality, travel, and lodging over $500 per year per giver. This is not a total gift ban. There are exceptions to this. Those exceptions include gifts between family members, right? Who the hell cares if you give your cousin a Christmas present? Uh, major life events, weddings, graduations, that kind of thing. Uh, romantic relationships, if you're in love, whatever. Uh, informational materials, that's things like handouts, brochures, booklets. Awards or prizes and public contests, including lottery winnings, because legislators still want to be able to play the lottery. Honorary degrees, training in the interest of a governmental entity, food at public events, events directly related to their public duties, 
events where the public official is a speaker, regularly scheduled events sponsored by constituents, statewide organizations, and nonprofits, gifts between officials and their staff, educational missions to educate public officials on matters of public policy, anything paid for by another governmental entity, an honorarium award plaque or trophy that's valued at less than $100, items of de minimis in economic value, greeting cards, pens, hats, those kinds of things, light refreshments in a group setting, bona fide charitable or political events, organizations of public officials, private foundations, and nonprofits when it is directly related to the duties of the public official. So those are the, the exceptions that are written into the bill, into the gift ban bill. When you go in and lobby, that's what legislators are going to be most interested in. And, and we'll circle back to that later. Uh, then down here, we just have another paragraph that talks about um, the, the quantity of gifts that are, that are being exchanged. So it says, uh, according to a 2019 House Government Oversight Committee hearing, uh, please find that transcript online. We have it in our Slack. Uh, hell of a hearing. Um, the lobbyists came in and testified. Yeah, here's how we get around the reporting thresholds. But anyway, so according to that uh, hearing, over $1.5 million per year in gifts are given from lobbyists to legislators, but only about $40,000 per year of those gifts are being reported by the legislators themselves. So reporting loopholes allow at least 97% of gifts from lobbyists to legislators uh, to be completely secret. Um, but even if we did have perfect transparency, that's not the answer because gifts still violate the public's trust in our legislators. We need our legislators to be responsive to the will of the public and not to gift giving lobbyists and special interests. The gift, the gift ban previously passed out of committee in uh, 2019, and it passed again out of the House State Government Committee in 2021. It has never received a full House vote or any Senate votes. House Bill 484 is the 35th gift ban bill to be introduced in the last 23 years, and it will be the first gift ban bill to pass into law this session. Please co-sponsor, this is the demand section here at the end of the legislative handout. Please co-sponsor House Bill 484. Please tell your colleagues and leadership that you support the gift ban, and please make public statements to your constituents explaining your support. And for more information and to track our legislative progress, please go to our website, mohpa.org. So that's the legislative handout. That's what you're going to walk into the meeting with. And that's also what you um, leave with them. Print it out, print out a copy, take it in with you, leave it with them. If you're meeting over Zoom, send it to them as an email or just send them a link to our website. It has all of this. The next document here in the preparation is called the General Counterpoints. These are things that we've just heard a million times that you'll probably hear when you go in and lobby. Um, there, some of them are pretty ridiculous. Let's go through them together. So you're going to hear things like, oh, this is the way it's always been, or I've been here for 30 years and it's never been a problem before. People don't care about this, blah, 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 blah. So what we say to that is, you know, these problems are getting worse. Um, the public's trust in government is lower than it's been in a very long time. And we are here to tell you that these problems are real and, and they're getting worse. Uh, we're suffering because of an indifferent government and fixing these issues would go a long way toward healing our wounded democracy and building trust between you, the government, and us, the people. Um, people, especially the old timers in the legislature, they get very stuck in the way things are. And you really got to knock them out of that. You really have to, to show them that there's a downward trend and that we're trending toward um, uh, bad times, uh, and, and we're already in them. Um, I've, I've said very bluntly uh, to, to legislators in meetings, things like, um, you know, we're trending downward, and if we don't fix these problems now, this corruption, it's just going to get worse. And we're here asking nicely, and we come in with nonviolence, and you might not like our nonviolent direct actions, but we know that 10 steps behind us is the guillotine. And once that gets here, there's nothing we can do for you. And we're gonna, it's gonna be really bad. Um, so you can deal with us right now and take on these problems peacefully, or it's gonna spiral out of control and there's nothing we can do at that point. 
they're going to say things like, it's politically impossible. They love this line, politically impossible, whatever the hell that actually means. I'm still not sure. So what we say is, you know, uh, most things are politically impossible until they're done. <laughs> and then they just happen. Laws are never stuck. They're not set in stone. They change all the time. And we are confident that if enough people want these bills, and they do, enough people want the gift ban, then we can turn them into law. Don't let political impossibility become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, it's not a real thing. Um, it's only what you think it is. And we promise that we're going to fight as hard as we can to make it politically impossible to not pass our bills. That if you do pass, that if you, you stand in the way of our bills, that's going to be the dumbest thing you can do politically which we've done over the years. We've, we've made four very powerful legislators resign or retire uh, because we made them defend the gift ban bill, and that's a politically impossible thing to do. So another thing that they might say is, oh, it's the other party's fault. Oh, that other party, they're so stupid. If only the other party was dead, then everything would be great. If only they just didn't exist, then we would be so great. So there's two ways that, that we respond to this. One is to really stay positive and stay on that moral nonpartisan high ground and just say, you know, this is the type of partisanship that we need to rise above. We cannot be governed by two groups that are constantly at war with each other. We need to build trust. We need you to be working together on a nonpartisan basis so that we can build trust and repair our relationships. Now you can lean into that in that way and stay positive and moral and stay on that high ground. Or feel free to really lean into the partisanship and lean in with a challenge. You know, let them know. Voters are desperate for candidates and parties that take on hyper-partisanship and special interests. That's why every successful candidate promises to drain the swamp in one way or another. Every candidate, when they're running, they know the note to hit, to say out loud, is drain the swamp. We're going to sweep the crooks out of Washington. We're going to kick the lobbyists out of the, the Capitol. Uh, they know to say that because it's really popular. And the first party to actually do it, to actually pass anti-corruption laws, is going to be wildly popular. They'll have proven that they are the people's party. And the first party to pass these laws, to pass the gift ban and more, they're going to win every election for three generations because people are desperate for some sort of uh, trust building uh, uh, movement here. We're, we're, we're desperate for any politicians or party to, to actually do something about these issues, this blatant corruption. So another one uh, that we hear all the time is, we just don't have the time to deal with this, or I'm really focused on the budget right now and just don't have time. Okay, so we understand there's a lot of work to do. And you and your colleagues have a lot of problems and challenges to face. Almost 2,000 bills a session every two years. We have two-year sessions. Almost 2,000 bills a session go across your desk. We, we know that. There's a lot of issues in front of you. But let's be honest here. This institution doesn't really get things done. It doesn't really pass any of those bills. There have been seasons where one in five bills are bridge namers. We need you and your colleagues to deal with a massive amount of problems that we're facing, but you never seem to do any of those. You never seem to take on those massive problems because of the corruption, because of these process issues that we're talking about. And so we need you to actually deal with the basic decision-making process itself, how government makes decisions. That's what we're here to talk about. And so our bills are of primary importance and you need to push them to the top of your agenda because until you pass them, nothing else is going to happen here. That, and that, that's what's happening, is there's, there's little tweaks, there's little things here and there, but it's mostly just naming bridges and, and post offices, and it's, it's nonsense. I'm sorry, bridges and highways, if the federal government names post offices. So then uh, the next one that, that we have here is, I don't like your nonviolent actions. Why can't you just do things the right way? Oh God, I hear this one all the time. So, you know, just make it clear, like everyone else, we don't like creating disruptive situations or going to jail. That's not fun for us. It's not fun for anybody. We don't like having to engage in nonviolent direct actions. We would prefer to just talk things through, which is what we're doing right now. 
And our nonviolent direct actions, though, they're necessary because when negotiations break down, nonviolence is a tactic that's designed to force the encounter with the obstructionist who refuses to negotiate or budge and give them the chance to choose to do the right popular moral thing or to choose to protect a, a system of corruption and hyperpartisanship. And those nonviolent direct actions, they change the leverage at the negotiating table. They change the power dynamic. So we would love to never have to engage in direct actions again. Oh my God, to, oh, that'd be great. Um, but that completely depends on whether you and your colleagues pass our overwhelmingly bills to make corruption illegal or not. And if you choose not to, then we're going to continue to, to protest. And we do try to do things the right way. That's what this conversation is right now. That's what this lobbying is, us doing things the right way. We've also met with everybody in the building. We've done things the right way many times over. Don't let them bully you with that. Bully is the wrong word. Don't let them gaslight you with that. Well, if only you asked the nice way. Well, we have. Doesn't matter. You don't care. That's why we protest. Now do you care? Okay, let's talk. Um, they make it sound like they were, they always make it sound like, oh, we were about to pass the gift ban, but then you protested. Like, like 30 seconds, you know, we were going to pass it. And then you, you came in here and protested. So we said, no, we can't do that. It's nonsense. It's absolute bullshit. Um, okay. Another thing they're going to say is these aren't issues that people in my district care about. My voters don't care about this. So say to them, um, you know, it's it's good that that you know, you know, that you have a good relationship with your constituents. Uh, next time you see them, ask them if they trust their government, because polling shows that over eighty percent of Americans do not trust our government, and only eleven percent of Pennsylvanians think that there is little corruption in government. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in Pittston. Woo! Uh, I think that's May twenty first or twenty second. It's on our website. <laughs> Disruptthecorrupt.org. Looking forward to seeing you there. Um, so uh, uh, they'll say, uh, you know, I, I know my constituents and they don't care. That's nonsense. Your constituents just don't tell you about these issues probably because they're hopeless in you to do anything about them. Um, you need to uh, uh, ask them, do you trust your government? They're going to say no, because corruption is everywhere. Uh, it's blatant. It's in our face. Um, and then, you know, what we say to legislators is when you talk to them, Go in with the attitude of you need to prove them wrong. They're going to say to you, I don't trust our legislature. I don't trust our government. And you need to take on an, an, an attitude of, no, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to earn your trust. I'm going to, we're going to pass this gift ban bill. We're going to pass ranked choice voting. We're going to earn your trust. Another thing they'll say is your bill isn't that much of a problem. Oh, gifts. Gifts are nothing. I mean, that's just what, like a bunch of Super Bowl tickets and trips to the Bahamas, a whole lot of Eagles uh, uh, sideline passes, a whole lot of concert tickets. That's nothing. The real money is in campaign finance, or the real money is in uh, closing the revolving door. And so our answer to that is, of course, you're, you're not wrong. Um, there's many problems. There's many, many, many problems that we have, and we have to start somewhere. Uh, gift ban is actually the lowest hanging fruit on the rotten money and politics tree. There is campaign financing, there is side jobs, there are dark money. There, there's a lot of ways that money gets into Pennsylvania politics. There's a lot of ways of, of bribing legislators. It's not just the gifts, um, but you gotta start somewhere. And that, that's where we start uh, for a few reasons because um, it's easier to understand, it's more direct uh, and it's, it's a simpler bill. Um, but our long-term you know, agenda is the, the money out people and policy agenda that's up on our website. And there's 23 policies up there on our money out people and agenda. Sorry. And that's our roadmap to achieving functional democracy, func functional governance. So we're focusing on the gift ban and ranked choice voting right now because we think we can pass them this session and they can have a big impact. We also love to focus on other bills. Um, and if anything that's on our agenda starts to move, we jump behind it. Uh, open primaries right now. Is starting to get some legs, so we're jumping into that a little bit. Um, and then also, you know, this this is really more to the people watching this training. Uh, we can only launch as many campaigns as we can support. And so please join the movement, join the organization so we can launch more campaigns. Uh, we're, des we're eager to, to launch a few um, campaign financing, 
side jobs. Uh, these are the next ones coming down the pike. So then they might say in the meeting, um, I don't like that line in the bill. That one line in the bill is bad. It should say this instead of that, you know, something technical, something detailed, something small. And if they do that, uh, don't negotiate the specifics with them. Please, for the love of God, don't sit there and try to say, you know, I also don't like that line. Um, what if we did this instead? What if we changed it to this? What if we made that dollar amount, you know, this dollar amount instead in the bill? Um, don't, don't get into that with them. Please, please, please don't get into that with them. Uh, here's what we say. Let me get in touch with our legislative team and I'll get back to you. We've been able to work cooperatively with our bill sponsors on changing language in our bills, and we will try to resolve this issue. But please let me get back to you on this. And let me take this back internally and then make sure that you properly write down what their concern is and then report it back when you report back uh, you know, on the meeting. Let us know. And we'll send that concern to our, our policy wonks and they will uh, uh, take it from there. Um, then this next thing is, uh, um, this is just kind of a catch-all. You know, if, if they're being really difficult about the bills, uh, if, if they're obviously against the gift ban, you know, just, just let them have it. Um, just, just really focus in on trust. That's kind of the note to hit. You're, you're hearing that word a lot in this training, trust, building trust, earn our trust. That, that we can't trust you. We don't trust you. You need to earn our trust. Um, so if they're being difficult, if they're just against the gift ban to begin with, say to them, you know, as long as state legislators can accept bribes from lobbyists, I'm not going to trust you. I'm not going to trust the state legislature. I don't trust the two big parties. And I don't trust any decision that this legislature makes. I don't trust you. You need to earn my trust because if there is no public trust and there is very little left, then the whole country, the whole state, the whole civilization, this all falls apart without trust. If we don't trust each other, nothing happens. And that is an unacceptable outcome. That is an unacceptable situation. And you need to earn our trust right now. So that's the, the general counterpoints document there. Those are just things that we've heard a lot, things that you'll probably hear. And now let's go into gift ban counterpoints. So these are very specific to the gift ban, um, things that, that you're going to hear in, in, in these meetings. And so here we go. Don't we already have transparency around gifts? Isn't that enough? Transparency is not enough. Just because we know that something bad is happening doesn't make it acceptable. It is unacceptable for legislators to receive large gifts from lobbyists and knowing about it, frankly, only makes us angrier. Good to see you from Chester County. We're coming to Delaware County on May 18th, uh, disrupt-the-corrupt.org. Uh, please, please join in. Um, you know, so, so when they say that transparency is enough, just let them know, no, it's not enough. And in fact, it makes us angrier to see these things <laughs> when you're doing something wrong. Uh, uh, it doesn't make it okay if you're transparent about it. That, that, that doesn't make, you can't murder somebody and say, well, I did it in broad daylight. Everybody saw it. Doesn't that make it okay? Of course not. And then also let them know that our transparency is uh, completely, completely broken. Um, you know, according to that uh, 2019 House Government Oversight Committee report that we talked about earlier, you know, legislators only report receiving about $40,000 a year in gifts. But lobbyists report giving them 1.5 million a year in gifts, and that 1.5 million is also a noted undercount. All we know is the numbers above that. Another thing they're going to ask you, is this like Governor Wolf's zero exceptions gift ban? And we say to them, no, this is not like the last governor's zero exceptions gift ban. It's not a total gift ban. There are exceptions. Um, there are exceptions, and uh, 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 there's comments here. Um, when you're back in the state, join up, join the movement, join the movement, sign up online, get plugged in, join the Southeast chapter. Um, there's a lot of organizing to be done out, out in Chester for sure. It, it has been uh, abused by corruption for, for far too long. Um, so they're going to say, is this like Governor Wolf's zero exceptions gift ban? No, there's exceptions in here for things like meals, educational missions, charitable events. And then we have the full list of exceptions. It's printed here again. It's also in the legislative handout. Um, they might, they're going to ask you questions about specific things. 
they're going to ask you questions about, um, well, so I go to the conference in Colorado every year where we talk about environmental policies. Is that okay? And so, yeah, that, that's an educational mission, right? You're going there to learn about public policy. You're going as a public official. That's okay. If they say, oh, you know, I want to go to the symphony in Austria this year. No, no, that, that's not an educational mission. That, that's not okay. Um, they're going to ask you, is it okay if we can still go in and get a meal? You know, uh, 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 can they pay for a meal? Um, you know, and then let them know, yes, yeah. And, and that was something we had to compromise on in this bill is, is the meals. But the meals are okay in this bill. Um, <laughs> this is a passable bill. This bill was written, uh, I, I said this earlier, but this bill was written by different factions within the legislature coming together to write one that, that they can pass. Um, so then, uh, you know, I'm sorry in the comments there, that's, that's a rough story there. Sorry that you went through that. Uh, so then uh, they're going to say things like, well, I don't accept any gifts. So what's the problem? I don't take gifts. I'm clean. I'm pure. What's the problem here? And so we say, you know, thank you. Thank you for not taking any gifts, but your colleagues do. And as, you know, voters, as, as constituents here in Pennsylvania, we can't trust our legislature while people are taking gifts and your colleagues are taking gifts. So thank you for not being guilty of taking those gifts, but you are still responsible for outlawing those gifts. You are responsible for your colleagues' behavior. This happened one time in a meeting um, with a, a pretty conservative state rep in North Central Pennsylvania. No, gifts are tax-free, as are per diems. I'm sorry, this response to a comment. Um, they'll say, I remember one time in a meeting, this legislator was saying, I don't take any gifts. I don't take any gifts. What's the problem? Why are you even here talking with me? And then she said, according to my Judeo-Christian values, I am only responsible for my own behavior. And I said back, and, and I'm a rabbi, so I, I said back, um, you know, the uh, 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 Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel summarized the entire Hebrew Bible with the phrase, some are guilty, all are responsible. When Cain murdered his brother Abel, and God asked the question, where is your brother Abel? And Cain says, am I my brother's keeper? You know, am I in charge of him? Am I responsible for him? The rest of the Bible is the answer to that question. And the answer is yes, you are responsible. And that, that got through to the state rep, and it, it changed their thinking. And, and they, they got a little bit active on the gift man after that. Um, it, it worked. Another thing they're going to say, oh, and this one is so common, um, gifts aren't really bribes. Do you really think I would change my vote on an issue based on a gift paid for by a lobbyist? I only take gifts from lobbyists whose mission already agrees with my own. They can't influence my vote. I know where I came from. I am who I am. I can't be corrupted. You're going to see that a lot. That that's a just pure arrogance coming at you at that point. And so what we say is, you know, our goal is to change the culture in Harrisburg so that gifts are just not part of the process. When a person with business before the state buys a gift for a state official, it sure does look and smell a lot like a bribe. And even that perception of bribery is enough to change the culture here because we don't trust you. And we're not here to blame people for participating in a broken system. We're here to change the system. We're not here to say that you're guilty. We're here because we need to evoke a sense of responsibility in you to do something about this. We need you to take responsibility and outlaw gifts so that uh, uh, you all can be responsive to we the people and not to lobbyists armed with unlimited gifts. And then to say to them, you know, I, I often go into a quote from Deuteronomy uh, chapter 16, I think first 18 or 19 or 20, um, do not take a bribe because a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous. And that when you're in a relationship where bribes are being given and taken, there's a brain fuzziness that comes up. There's a, a cloudiness in your brain. You're not thinking straight. You're not thinking properly anymore. Um, and this is this. It's hard to tell if this line is is genuine or, or disingenuous. Sometimes, um, I, I think a lot of them really do believe it. That they really believe that they are so solid in who they are, so confident, arrogant in who they are, that nothing can influence them in any way. And so, another thing to say to them at this point is, um, 
if the gifts didn't have an influence, why would they be giving them to you? Do you, do you really think the lobbyist wants to go hang out with you on a, on a Sunday afternoon in, in the owner's box at, a, at an Eagles game? Do, do you really think that they want to go out to dinner with you every night? I mean, like, don't, don't get mean about it, but you know, most legislators are balding, pudgy white dudes in their 60s and 70s. Um, they're not rock stars, <laughs> not people you want to spend your time with generally. Uh, so yeah. Um, and uh, yes, uh, we, we've made a, just responding to a comment here, we've made a, a lot of connections up in the Northeast. Um, please uh, sign up, get involved, connect with our Northeastern chapter leaders, uh, Beth Taylor and Nancy Weston. Um, we, we have a, a bunch of connections up up in the Northeast. We do a lot of, a lot of lot organizing up there. We'll be in Bethlehem on May 20th and Pittston on May 22nd for our Disrupt the Corrupt tour. Um, yeah. Another thing they're going to say is, you know, I receive gifts of 76ers tickets or Thanksgiving turkeys, and I distribute them to my poor constituents. If we ban these gifts, then those people suffer. Don't get too into this one. Um, I recommend just saying this, and you're going to hear this from a lot of Philadelphia Democrats. This is a very common practice here in Philly where I am, where legislators will take gifts from a corporation and then distribute those gifts to voters. Uh, it's not a good setup. Um, it is, uh, if you've ever seen the movie American Gangster, it's literally the opening scene of that where uh, Denzel Washington's boss is handing out turkeys off the back of the truck right before Thanksgiving and, and buying favor in, in the neighborhood. Um, it's an Al Capone move. It's something he used to do to, to buy favor. Uh, it's vote buying. Um, it's not good. But we, we, we fought and fought and fought on this issue. And the compromise is that um, if it's a charitable event, the legislator is allowed to be there at the event distributing the turkeys, but it has to go through a charity. You have to bring in the United Way or the Boy Scouts or the local church or whatever it is. You have to bring in a charity to be that middle person who gets the gift from the corporation and gives it out um, you know, to, to the people there. Uh, it needs to be a charitable event. So that those are just uh, standard talking points there. Um, Let's now go into the next preparation document. And uh, please, of course, go through these on your own too. As you prep, use this video. And again, I'm going to say this a million times, reach out to us, connect with us on Slack, sign up, plug in, um, ask for help, ask for support. You, shouldn't you should not be going into a meeting alone if you're not ready for that. And you should know before you go into a meeting that we, you know what our past conversations with that legislator have been like. And if we have any other people in the district or nearby who, who can join in and support, and we do, we have people all over the state. The next link here is simple. It's just the bill. This is House Bill 484. Um, the, the, the link will take you right to the, the legislature's website to read the text of the bill. Click down here. This will open up the text of the bill. Reading the text of a bill is another presentation we do. Um, it's written in fascinating legalese with interesting formatting. Um, and then we have the uh, uh, also on this page here with the, the bill page, um, you can see the history of the bill. So you can see who has signed on as a co-sponsor already. We're just getting started with getting co-sponsors. So we're only at 10 now. That number needs to go way, way, way up and it will. That's what you're doing. People who are watching this, you're going to go in and lobby and run up the co-sponsor tally. So that is uh, the bill page there. And then the last link here is called Researching Your Representative. This will take you to a presentation that we do where you can go through your representative uh, and your senator, your legislators, um, uh, their biographical information, of course, the simple stuff, uh, and then the more detailed stuff. Uh, who's donating to their campaigns? What are they spending their campaign money on? Um, who's giving them gifts? Who's give, do they have a side job? Do they have, uh, um, do, do they have a, a, a other you know, sources of income that they're taking in? Um, so that, that slideshow will help you kind of research your, your legislators and get a good sense of who they are. But again, also, we've done a lot of research. We've met with a lot of these people. When you connect with your chapter leader to find out to let them know who you want to go lobby, um, they'll tell you, you know, oh yeah, we've met with so-and-so, they take a lot of money from the gas industry, they're kind of a jerk, uh, but they do have a soft spot for, um, you know, Penn State football, talk about Penn State football, uh, become friends that way. So those are all the ways to prepare for a meeting. That's how you prepare for a lobbying meeting. 
Now, actually doing the meeting, we have these lists of do's and don'ts <laughs> of, of doing, a, of handling a meeting. Um, some of these are really common sense. Some of them are, are a little tougher to, to do, but we really do strongly encourage you to, to follow these do's and don'ts. You'll, you'll have a lot more success if you do. So first, do be on time or early for the meeting. And, and I'd actually change that to, to be early. Um, God, there's an old phrase, uh, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. If you're late, you're screwed. Don't be late. Do not be late. Be early. Show up five minutes before. They might not be there on time. They likely won't be there on time. That's okay. It's a double standard. We have to be better than them. So we have to be there early so that we're on time. Do be courteous and respectful with everyone in the office. The legislator isn't the only person in the office. And in fact, they do the least amount of work in the office. Be nice, be courteous, be respectful with the secretary, with the legislative director, with the chief of staff, with all the other staffers in the, in the office. Be nice to them, be courteous, be a human being, be respectful. Um, when, when you were trying to get the legislator to do things, it's often more important that the staff wants that thing to happen because they'll make sure that the legislator then does it. Legislators are helpless infants without their staff. Um, do identify clearly the reason that you are sitting in front of them and the bill that you want to discuss. Don't go in to just have a vague conversation, right? You're there to talk about the gift ban. You're there to talk about House Bill 484. You're there to talk about the gift ban. Make that clear right from the get-go. Hello, good to see you. Good to meet with you. We're here to talk about the gift ban, House Bill 484. Do get personal about why this issue is important to you and how it affects you. Facts are very important, but feelings go a much longer way to changing people's minds. So please explain to them, this is why this is important. When I see legislators taking gifts from lobbyists, it hurts. It hurts me. I don't trust you. And then I see the decisions that this legislature makes, and those decisions hurt me. Those are policy violence. I'm suffering right now from a lack of health care. And I don't think it's a coincidence that Independence Blue Cross has the one of the best uh, parking spots at the state capitol, and they spend millions of dollars every year in lobbying and campaign contributions, and they deny every time I, I need to use my health insurance, it's it's too expensive to use, and they just deny me care. Th those that's not a coincidence. That that's and that pisses me off, and that makes me sad, and it hurts me. Right? Make it clear why corruption affects you, how corruption affects you, um, and to to um, uh, please, in our uh, the, this disrupt the corrupt presentation that we're doing now uh, across the state, we go into a lot of detail on on some of those uh, corruption connections, ways corruption, you know, impacts our lives um, pr pretty directly. Uh, also, do restrict yourself to focusing on a small number of issues. Do not go in there with the whole kitchen sink. Do not go into a meeting with ten issues that you want to get through. You're not going to get through them all. You're going to confuse everybody, including yourself. Focus, 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 focus. No less than one issue. Of course, you have to have at least one issue. No more than three issues. Do not go into a meeting with more than three things to talk about. You will not get to them. You'll, you'll hurry through everything else. It's not a good way to do it. Restrict yourself to a small number and focus. Focus is key in these meetings. Can't stress that enough. Focus is key. The legislators will often try to unfocus you. They'll bring up other issues. Just keep refocusing, just keep bringing it back to why you're there. Do remember to listen well and choose your moments and words wisely. Politicians love to talk. They love the sound of their own voice. They are going to talk, 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 talk. Let them, let them. Don't compete with them. Don't try to talk over them. Let them gas bag themselves out. Listen, choose your moments wisely and use your, you know, choose your words wisely. Make sure that you know what you want to say, what you want to convey, and convey it. Ask them leading questions. Ask them questions that get them to talk out loud and get to where you want them to get to. You know, get them thinking about uh, uh, how corruption affects, you know, public trust. Get them thinking about, um, you know, how their constituents think about politics and politicians, right? Get them thinking about how 
the, you know, ask them questions about what do you, what do you want to accomplish while you're here? Why did you come into office? Um, how do you feel that's going? Have you accomplished what you want to accomplish? Um, and, and you're going to, you know, when, when you ask questions, when you listen, you're going to get them to kind of convey their own frustrations. God, I've been here 10 years working on this one healthcare issue and I can't get a damn thing done because all of those UPMC lobbyists, they just have leadership bought. I, I can't get anything through my own house leadership because they're bought and sold by those people. Get them to talk honestly, to talk openly, ask them questions and listen well. Remember, of course, this next one, be nonpartisan. We are nonpartisan. You need to be nonpartisan in meetings when you're talking about these issues, because if you're partisan, the game is over. It's over. You lost. We can't be put into the partisan partisan prism. Everything we do is nonpartisan. Um, if it becomes one party versus the other, the game is over. We lost. Because what they'll do is they'll say, uh, well, if only my party had this specific amount of power, then we could get this done. But the other party's stupid. They can't get it done. Sorry, nothing we can do. Go home. Goodbye. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. Also, don't make them, um, well, I'll, we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, do remember that your goal is to form a relationship and to convince them to support our bills. And it's okay if you don't agree on everything. It is really okay to have disagreement and to just say, we don't agree on that, that's okay. They're gonna say some ridiculous things. Legislators say ridiculous things about different issues. They'll say things like, um, you know, they'll, they'll, God, there was one representative one time who started talking about ivory poaching in Africa and how we need to uh, make it easier for people to go shoot elephants in Africa and, and, and take their ivory. I mean, that, that's absurd. That, that's a ridiculous thing to say. Uh, we didn't touch that issue. We didn't argue with him over ivory poaching. We didn't argue with him over that. Uh, why? No, we focused on the gift ban. We brought him back to the gift ban again and again and again, and we focused them. Um, they're going to say things that don't that you don't agree with. They're going to say things that are going to contradict your basic human rights. They're going to say things that contradict your basic civil rights. Take a deep breath. It's not okay, of course, but take a deep breath and focus. You're there to talk about what you're there to talk about. Don't don't fight them on everything, because um, what will happen is you'll you'll get into a huff. They'll start yelling at you. You'll start yelling at them. They'll kick you out of your office, and then it's just done, and that's it. And we can always come back with some sort of nonviolent direct action, but we, we've lost the game already at that point. Um, don't don't succumb to anger. Do be a source of hope and courage for your legislator. Legislators are often very depressed, um, especially the rank and file ones, the ones who have less power within the institution. They're often very depressed and they lack courage. Um, part of the goal is to get them to, to feel hopeful that something can actually happen. Uh, you know, let them know, you know, y'all do have the power to vote on these things and you can do these things. And if you do it, then it's done. Um, you know, and, and we, the people are, are here to, to push you to do that right thing and, and to back you up when you do it. Uh, so, you know, really give them hope and courage. That, that, that's very key. Um, another one, do let them know that you'll follow up with them. Uh, if they have questions about the bill, let them know, okay, we're going to take this back to our legislative team, and then we will, uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. Um, so, you know, really, really do let them know that you're going to follow up with them and, and do follow up with them. Uh, do give them the legislative handout. So that was the first document that we went through when we were preparing. That, that handout has a lot of answers to the questions that they're going to have, um, especially around, you know, the exceptions within the bill language itself. And again, do record any specific questions about any bills in the reporting form so that we can follow up. We're going to get to reporting in a second, but it is extraordinarily important that we track our data and, and know what's happening here across the state. Um, okay, so the do nots. Do not get bogged down in negotiating specific details of the bills with the legislator. Do not go in and say, oh, um, okay, so you have a problem with this detail of the bill. Uh, what if we did it this way? Or what if we did it that way? Or, you know, blah, blah, blah. Don't negotiate with them. 
you're, you're meeting with one out of 203 state representatives. You and them do not have the power to rewrite the bill there on the spot. What you need to do is get their feedback, what they want the bill to be, write it down and report it back to, to the team. And then we gather all of that and, and we take it from there. Uh, uh, this other one here, we've already touched on this one a bit. Do not get personal about specific politicians or specific political parties. Don't do it. Don't go in there defending whoever is in your political party. Don't go in there defending politicians in DC or, or don't, don't bring them up. They're not relevant. Don't talk about Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden or Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis or who cares? They're not there. They're not in the room. They don't matter. And all that's going to do is it's going to make you or them either have to defend or attack those specific people. And then it becomes all about that, those specific people or those specific parties. Don't do it. Do not succumb to political tribalism. They will try to do this to you often. They're trying to figure out, is this somebody who already is in my party or not? You want them to think that you're an independent. You want them to think that, that you don't, you're, you're not partisan. You are not a partisan. That is key to these meetings. If they pigeonhole you, if they identify you as this or that, um, if they can put you on your heels and make you defend the actions of your party or your favorite politicians, you lost. Because every party and every major politician has skeletons in their closet. They're part of this corrupt system. You can't defend their corruption. Don't try and don't make them defend it either. Don't go in and say, well, why did you vote for this dumbass? Blah, 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 blah. They're so corrupt. No, don't do it. That's how people on CNN talk to each other. That's not how human beings talk to each other. Don't do it. Don't succumb to political tribalism. Another one here on the same line, do not let your tone marginalize you. Hostility will be met with hostility and the meeting will end. Be passionate, but be calm. Be reasonable, be level-headed, be in control of yourself and the situation. Don't let your tone marginalize you. Don't start screaming at them. Don't yell at them. Don't just blow off a whole bunch of steam. That's the next one here. Do not use this time to blow off steam. That's not what this is for. Yes, there, there's a comment in here. That's how people on Fox News talk to each other. It's how people on MSNBC talk to each other too. It's also how people on CNN talk to each other. It's how every pundit talks to each other. They just get into their political tribes and throw arrows at each other and spears at each other from their trenches. It's crap. It's not the way human beings talk to each other. Um, yeah. So then, uh, 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 yeah, right. Most, uh, just responding to comments here in, in the chat. Yeah, uh, most media outlets are, um, I shouldn't say most, many media outlets are billionaires who fund millionaires to tell us that the problem isn't billionaires being greedy and passing laws to take more from the rest of us. They're telling you to blame your neighbor. That's the goal of propaganda. It's to get you to blame your neighbor. So MSNBC convinces us that the white rednecks in the hills are the devil and they are the worst and the Republicans are, are the devil. Um, Fox News convinces us the opposite. Be afraid of those black people in the cities. They're dangerous, they're violent. And CNN just kind of throws it all around, right? But they're, they're all trying to divide and conquer. That's the name of the game for them. Um, and they're all owned by ruling class billionaire interests that have very similar agendas at the end of the day. Uh, that's another presentation though, sorry. <laughs> Let's stay focused here, stay focused. Um, the next line here is stay focused. Uh, so, right, so in, in the meetings, um, stay focused, discuss the bill, explain why it is important and make your asks. The asks to make are co-sponsor House Bill 484, the gift ban. Co-sponsoring is when a, a, a legislator puts their name on the bill and it's public. They say, my name's on the bill. I co-sponsor this. I support it. The second one is make a public statement. Tell your voters that you support the gift ban. The third one is tell your colleagues and your leadership that you support the gift ban and that you want it to actually pass. Leadership is the term for... Um, the legislators who are in those leadership positions, uh, Speaker of the House, Majority Leader, Caucus Chair, Committee Chair, uh, Policy Committee Chair, right? Those are those are the leadership. And so what we've seen in the past, especially with the gerrymandering, with the gerrymandering bills, is that legislators will sign on, they'll co-sponsor, they'll make a public statement, and then they'll go tell their leadership, hey, 
I actually don't want this to happen. My voters want this to happen. They put some pressure on me. I don't want to fight with them over this. But for the love of God, don't actually let this bill get called to a vote. My name's on it. It means nothing. Um, I'm not actually for this. And that'll happen a lot. So that third ask is to let them know that you know that what's important is what they're telling their leadership and that you, you, want, you need them to tell their leadership that they support the gift ban. Step four, this is the final step of, of lobbying here, of this training, reporting. Oh my God, if you do not report, we're coming for you. Uh, tell us what happened in the meetings. Tell us who you met with, how'd it go? Uh, what's their position on the gift ban? What other thoughts did they share with you? Do you or the legislator have any follow-up questions for our legislative team, right? Be sure to fill out this reporting form or just write up a report and put it into Slack um, and we'll take it from there. Uh, but please report back, please, please, please report back or else we, we don't track the meetings and we don't know what's happening. And the, the key to a statewide campaign is, is moving forward together. Uh, we can't just move forward in this region or that region, it's forward together. And if we're not together on it, our work is, is meaningless. Um, it, it, it doesn't matter at a certain point. So please, please report back when, when you're done. Um, and I'm going to close us out here just by uh, summarizing all of this. You need to lobby. You don't need to go to Harrisburg to lobby. You can lobby in, in your local district office or over Zoom, right? You don't need to travel, but you need to do it. You need to talk to these people because if you don't, who will? And the answer is the corporate lobbyists. That's who they're talking to all the time already. If we don't talk to them, nothing is ever going to happen for our issues. To schedule a meeting, I'm sorry, before you schedule a meeting, check in with us, check in with us, check in with us, check in with your chapter leader, check in over Slack, um, check in with us <laughs> so that we can tell you, uh, you know, oh yeah, we've already met with so-and-so, here's how it went, uh, we'll share our notes with you. Um, or we can say, yeah, we have three other people who want to go meet with that person. Uh, Y'all should go together, you should do this as a team, um, support each other. Or, you know, we can say, oh, so this is your first time lobbying. Do you need some support? Um, we're happy to go into the meeting with you. We're happy to do a training with you, whatever it takes. Um, uh, and, and please, please do. Um, and also, if you're with an organization uh, and you want to lobby as, as a group, as an organization, go for it. It's, this is all the same stuff. It's all the same. Um, then uh, you're going to schedule uh, meetings with representatives. Another side note here. Don't limit yourself to your own state representative. The lobbyist from Comcast does not limit him, their self to just the state rep in the district where they live. They go into any office they want to go into. Corporate lobbyists go wherever they want to go to, and they talk to whoever they need to talk to. So that, that's how we operate, too. So don't just think of it as, I have one representative to lobby. No, no. If you live in, let's say, Delaware County, for example, you have 10 state reps there. That means you have 10 state reps that are within your, your area. Go lobby them all. Um, and if you want to go lobby the guy from Erie, go lobby the representative from Erie. Doesn't matter. Um, yes, uh, uh, please, please do do get plugged in so that we can stay organized as we do this, um, and and report back on on the calls that you're making. Just just so we know, please. Um, you know, if you don't do it, it's not the end of the world, but it does make everything far more efficient and and helps us be smarter and better at what we do. Uh, then the second step here. So you've scheduled the meeting. You've, you've, I'm sorry, you've contacted us, you've communicated with your chapter leaders, um, you've scheduled the meeting, you know who you're going into that meeting with, you're preparing for that meeting by studying these five documents here, then study these do's and don'ts of the meeting, mentally prepare yourself for the meeting, go into it, stay focused, sorry, make sure that you make these three asks to co-sponsor the bill, to make a public statement and to tell their colleagues and leadership that they support it. And then report back afterward, report back afterward, fill out this form, it's up on our website. This is all on our website, mohpa.org. Um, and that, that, that's a lobbying training right there. That's how you do it. Uh, we lobby, we, we also do other tactics. We march, we do nonviolent direct actions. We do a whole lot of pressure building things across the state, a lot of leadership development, a lot of organizing. Um, please, please, if, if you're uh, if you're watching this, you're probably already involved in March on Harrisburg. Um, if, if you're not, get organized, dive in, jump in, sign up online, join our Slack, connect with your chapter leaders, join working groups, 
Um, there's so, so, so much going on and we have to move forward together and not one step back. So thank you all for watching this training. Thank you all for, for doing this, for being part of this. Um, we fight for democracy. We fight against corruption. Uh, we need to win so that we can live. It, it really is that simple. Um, thank you, thank you. Thank you all very much. And I'm gonna stop this recording and, and uh, uh, this right now. Be well.